come with us now, if you dare, down a rickety staircase into a dank, dark basement. What awaits the Saturday Night Freak Show? <laughs> hey, thanks for listening to the Saturday Night Freak Show podcast. Coming your way every Saturday, whether you're ready for it or not. Because we're on a quest to conquer the world one podcast listener at a time. You're helping us out with that right now. But you can go over to wherever you found us and hit that like or subscribe button because all that stuff helps us get found by other like-minded folks like you. We will conquer you. That's right. Hopefully we've already conquered <laughs> you. Let us know by hitting that like or subscribe button. Yes. Uh, you have to. You're conquered. Smash that bell. Um, <laughs> all right. These are the Internet Radio Superstars. Michaela. Sean. And I'm Colin. Should have said Holly just for the fucking. Yeah. I know. Yeah. Right? She's here. Unfortunately, she is on assignment. She's tonight. at an Airbnb. Yeah. Airbnb. Maybe, yeah. and she's out of town. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Hopefully, she comes back. I know because I think she liked tonight's movie, but yep. this movie yeah. was chosen by the by you folks at you? home. This was this on everybody's list. Uh, it was the well, it was actually. I don't think tied it was on for, Holly's. Okay. Oh right, because oh, she's yeah. Holly refused. Yeah. yeah, Holly cheated. I'd say. Yeah. Oh, the end she's of the like, year. Oh, list, we knew we were going to talk about it, so I didn't put it on my list. Yeah. Well, yeah. yeah. No, she's not. You no, know, it's it was it. it was my number one movie of 2022. It was my number one horror movie yep. of 2022. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I guess it's uh, kind of telling you where we're headed with mm-hmm. this. But anyway, yes. it so thanks is... for the gift, <laughs> listeners. I hadn't watched it twice yet, so there's still two movies that we're going to cover as part of Listener Choice Month, but this one is 2022's barbarian barbarian Barbarian. Mm -hmm. um why is it called barbarian yeah okay so that's a spoiler alert right because it's barbary street yes yeah yeah but but also i read something else as well well i don't know well okay i haven't read that so i'm assuming there's like a phonetic it sounds like airbnb it's also made out of only the letters that are in Airbnb. there you go okay. there you go and barbary i think yeah. is the barbary yeah. street mm-hmm. so they are mm-hmm. barbarian mm-hmm. okay Everyone's all right so barbarian. i was just kind of curious about that so it was directed mm-hmm. by a fellow named zach, zach Krager, who we would know from the whitest kids you know oh. as director uh i mean it was a uh, as a director uh this i don't no, i don't know I mean, i'm not super familiar with i them. guess that's what i was asking well why does kids you know is like a sketch it, comedy so, okay group, like so. a kids in the hall kind of thing uh, yeah I'm, I'm not super familiar with it either but as far as i know that's my understanding yeah and he so he's an actor yeah and i believe a writer as well okay a comedian okay mm-hmm. so he's a comedian mm-hmm. and he strikes out into directing with a horror movie mm-hmm. i love it when this happens yep. of course uh because we had jordan peele yep. and now we've got J- zach Kreger. and um, they are friends by the way of course they mm-hmm. are. Well, I mean, Zach Peel if, had some yeah, well, invisible hand. It's like okay, class. I'm of, tired of hearing. You know. I'm, hold on, we need to put a moratorium on. Did you know Jordan Peele like ghost produces? Did you know he like ghost right? Stop accrediting every good horror movie to Jordan Peele. Well, they true. did it with Candyman. That's he did true. not direct that movie. I, he might have executive produced it. Whatever. He's he did not direct that movie. It's not Jordan Peele's Candyman. Let's stop attributing movies to him that have nothing to do with him. His I'm name or, his name is not in the credits anywhere. I did not see it. So oh, this one. Yeah. Did you guys no, see his no, name? No, yeah, so let's stop attributing movies to him that, like, let's give credit where it's literally yeah, due, you yeah. know? Like, I, I hear this about every horror movie that comes out lately. Well, I heard Jordan Peele produced it, and I was like, no, he's not working on everything. No, yeah, you gotta and, give and credit to Arnon Michelin. Mich- mm-hmm. What's his name? The super producer who produces, like, every goddamn movie, and his name was on it. Oh, yeah. Roy really? Lee, nice. who we've talked about yeah. before. Mm-hmm is also on it. Those are the the brain yeah. power behind getting the money together to make this movie. All right. So, as you said, uh we're going to okay, we're going to spoil the shit out of this movie tonight yeah. because um we talked about because it a little bit on our uh, best and worst of the year episode. We tried to be spoiler free on that one. Yeah, we this did is right. the deep dive into this mm-hmm. movie. Um so we have to kind of you know, talk about it, you know, after having viewed it. So, I guess, yeah, you're hearing that it was on several uh, best of the year uh, lists. You should see the movie. Um, But for uh, be warned, we're going to spoil it. Never have we meant it more than right now. Like, (laughs) yeah, you really shouldn't know anything because it's not just what the movie's about. It's how the information is revealed in the movie. That is is what makes it interesting. And so just reading a summary or hearing someone tell you about it is not going to have the same impact as watching it. So please just go watch the movie. And this movie does play very coy with the information that it gives you which, mm-hmm. uh, in its marketing materials, which I think is, um, to its credit, it doesn't feel like uh, it's been spoiled really on social media or anything. Like the yeah. people who no. have seen it are like, 
Okay, dude, you just got to go right. see that movie. And I it's this mutual understanding why. that I love. Everyone's like, yeah. we're I not going to we, talk about Barbarian. Right. Like, I think we are getting better at that. Yeah. As a, unless, I mean, don't go on Twitter because they'll tell you everything. But yeah. I think we are getting better at just like, we don't want to ruin people's experiences. Well, well and I've been working on a poster anything. design for this movie since it came out. And I keep reworking it because there's no cool what poster can I can make Barbarian. without like the poster for this movie is all you can do yeah. it's just her in the doorway and the stairs and yeah, it's like the feeling because I well, keep eventually. reworking a, on it you could do a split level to it where below the house see if you can but, do something where yeah, it's that, above and below but that's the but, thing but, every, but that even still is is more information you know what oh, I'm yeah. saying like it, it, it just needs to be almost like Georgina Campbell's face reacting to something like an old school 70s posters and that's got to be like it. I mean there's a perfect you know? shot in yeah. the movie that was used in the trailers that, that I'm sure got used in there the is a good somewhere. artist poster out there that I think they were using theatrically for a little bit it's the hand coming out of the suitcase have you guys yes. seen that uh, it's yeah, a really bars, good the one yeah with on the bars like, oh, over. That's good. Yeah. it is a really good one and it's a great poster but yeah it's but I love that I have seen like normally I would be complaining that there isn't any barbarian merch or posters or stuff, but I love that all these horror artists and people I follow are just like, I, I can't, I can't make anything yeah. for it because I can't <laughs> give it away and there's yeah. nothing else I can do. Yeah. Like, because I guess it's one of the few like surprise, you know, sur- movie surprises in an era when they give everything away and mm-hmm. it's like, this is why you want to see it. So somebody somewhere took a big gamble with yeah. this, right? Like we're going to show them a trailer and, um, just based on that alone, I mean, the faith that Fox must have had in this because we're incredible. Assuming that you I know mean, they, they dumped so much stuff ones. to Hulu that you know this one actually got a theatrical release. So like Smile, I think probably should have gone to the Paramount Network, yeah. but it's test screenings. They're like, okay, we think we can do something with that. You're saying they they had a lot of faith. What? Uh, well, they were the only ones that had a lot of faith because even A24 passed on this movie. Really? Does this not feel like wow. an A24 movie at some point? A little, a little bit. bit. I mean, it a seems little bit. It's like mm. the type of thing that they would take uh, a chance on. Sure. Theirs would be a much more serious version. There would not be any humor the way Maybe this movie Justin, has. Well, well, who's I, to say? Yeah. 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 Well, okay. So, um, sorry, what's her name? Georgina? Georgina Campbell. And she, the only other thing that I can't remember like the British episode, TV, right? Black Mirror. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. I think one of the early mm-hmm. Black Mirror episodes. Um, and also Bill Skarsgård, mm-hmm. um, who had worked with the producer. Obviously, he did it. So yeah, yeah. and he executive the produced this movie as well. Probably mm-hmm. also part of the like, come on board. You'll be an executive producer and get a little bit of a kickback. On, uh, oh yeah, do you know he passed on the Northman for this? They he wanted didn't? him to be in the Northman with his brother. And, oh really? Yeah, and he was doing this. This instead. is a better idea. Yeah, better choice yeah. for him, I think. For yeah. sure. I mean, and far better for the movie. Yeah. Considering, I mean, how they use him in this movie, mm-hmm. which is. Which is why the trailer, I think, obviously worked for this, because you get in a horror movie, the concept of it, but then who opens the door is, you know, Pennywise, Pennywise. Right. So you're bringing baggage. Yes. So they actually do that really in smart. the casting several times then, so, uh, or at least twice with this. But yes. So having Bill Skarsgård in the movie is kind of giving you the idea that, right, this woman is going to go to this Airbnb and we don't trust him. Yes. Right? Um, it is like this kind of catalog of um, incidents where she is skeptical, right? Mm Because she goes to this Airbnb and finds out that supposedly it's double booked, right? Which, okay, if this actually happened to you, this would be the fucking worst day ever. Are you kidding me? Like, Um, you just got off your flight, you're finally ready to just, like, check in your Airbnb and fucking take a nap and... There's yeah. some rando there? Oh my god. Yeah. And that's how they like that's how it comes that's how they portray it in this, yeah. especially mm-hmm. when they're um I mean they discuss it as mm-hmm. characters in the movie how just awful it is yeah. and, and even the reversal of, you know, if she had been home and he had knocked on the door, what would have happened? But mm-hmm. Well, what I mean, I guess it's, uh, you know, I mean, obviously things are different for men and for women in these situations. I mean, yeah, they're saying it in the movie. If, yes. if it would have been him coming to the door, there's no way in hell no way. that she would have let no, him absolutely in. Not. Right. Um, there's a lot of suspicion. So I guess the first act of the movie is like this kind of back and forth. There's some tension, but I'm like curious what your guys, what your reads were like on your allegiances. Like who flip flopping. I mean, you know, flip flopping every scene with every scene, every different shot. 
Because who like, who's being the creep switches by each scene. Like yeah. when, even when she first goes up on the porch and she's like walking around and looking in the front windows, from his perspective, right. she's Take the problem. Yeah. Like, yeah. like she, who's yeah, fucking looking in my windows. Yeah. And he already knows it's not a great neighborhood, right? Because this is in. Uh, I mean, it's based in Detroit. Mm-hmm. Is is what the story tells us. You know what in the fuck is with the? I mean, I know we've seen uh, Don't Breathe and we've seen uh, Jennifer's Body mm-hmm. and like the. I know it I, follows. The, and it follows. There's the eight well. mile and like. Mm-hmm. It's Detroit just neighborhoods ravaged, of, ravaged, yeah. ravaged, man. Wow. You wouldn't need any set dressing special effects. I, I guarantee they just drove through. And I think some of it is film, like yeah. legit, yeah. Um, but it's dark, so that's actually one of the reveals of the movie is that she doesn't know how bad the neighborhood actually is until the sun comes up the next day. But at night, it's just you can tell there's no power. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know. So she's just found this by navigating through the app or whatever. Right, and a dark, stormy night. Yep. And the dude's in there. And so there's a lot of like, okay, so how are you actually going to keep your characters in, you know, why doesn't she leave? Yeah. Is I guess one of the screenwriting mm-hmm. things that you got to deal with. Like, yeah. how come she can't just go? Convention mm-hmm. in town. You, I mean, you, yeah, you just start coming up with the reasons. There's convention in town. It's really late at night. So mm-hmm. how, what are the odds you're going to find uh, uh, another hotel room? It's a bad neighborhood, according to him. The Although, weather sucks. It's right. raining. Yeah. But it's also him explaining all this stuff. So is, it's I mean, convenient for him. It's, it, but you're also, you're, every step of the way, you should be questioning just like, okay, is this true? Or is he trying to keep her there? Like, what is going on? He seems to have all the answers. And that's a problem. Because yeah. we don't know him and we don't know what his motivation is. Right. So we just walked into a, yeah. a house with him in it. So who knows? Yeah. But, and then, but and then you get things that are slowly revealed where she, you know, she goes in to use the bathroom and he's got his little, you know, uh, uh, bathroom bag and his, mm-hmm. his toothbrush is plugged in on the floor. Stuff that is revealed. You're like, okay, this seems normal yeah. enough. Like this is what people would I do. Think if that they was were the here. stuff that was like winning me over. Cause yes. at mm-hmm. some point, I mean, obviously it's a, you know, we know it's a horror movie sitting down to watch it. Right. right. So, there was the like, okay, what's going on here? I know the trailers have given away that there's a basement and I know that, you know, it's like, okay, so there's going to be torture shit in the basement somehow that one or both of them is going to be involved in the, uh, the, um, trailer. It does play the sound of him screaming and saying, help me. And so you're like, okay, either this is really clever marketing that's trying to throw you off yeah. or we know that, you know, that he's going to go down into this basement. The TV and, and spot disappear. shows him in the tunnel, unfortunately. Does it? Yeah. See, it's there, even maybe yeah. too yeah. much. It's just that, that quick cut of him like oh, running towards up. her. Yeah. Oh, that may be in the trailer. Yeah. That is, yeah, yeah. That that is which in the which trailer. if you don't have context for, it, I think is okay. Mm, I right. think when you well, don't, because you, then you think he's perpetrating something. You know, you think he's the villain in that moment if see, you I don't have con- if you don't have context yeah but i without context just watching the trailer mm-hmm. uh, that's where i was and maybe i brought that baggage mm-hmm. in i'm like i don't think he's actually a part of this mm-hmm. although to its credit the movie did play that mm-hmm. a couple of times where i was like yeah he's not in it something's gonna happen and like oh wait a second flip-flopping he yeah might be like part of some. The, right? the, you know the thing where i was actually thinking that the most was his um because you know there is revealed she goes down and finds a secret tunnel in the basement mm-hmm. yeah right and there's a room with a video camera and, and a bed mm-hmm. and, you're and like, a bucket and, and a bloody bucket. handprint and it's like okay this is like the worst you know case scenario it looks like a saw room yeah yep. it does yes and she's like i'm getting the fuck out of here mm-hmm. right and when he comes back and, and lets her out he's too ang- that was the one thing i was like so he's not believing that she saw it, or it's not so much that. It's like he needs to actually see it for himself yes. in order to believe it. Because it's the year of men not believing women at the movies, like we talked about on our end of year list. <laughs> I don't know what this means about, but I would also just, but this is for everybody. I would also, if someone came up and said that, I'd be like, all right, I kind of need to see this too. Like, I, I would need to see it. Not, I would need to see it. I'm just that person. I need to see it. <laughs> Are you proving the point of the movie? You know? I know. Well, I'm, yeah. I'm sorry, but I am. The, I'm not. I, like, if somebody came in and said there was a torture room in the basement with a camera, and I'd be like, okay, I need to see this because you're. I, like really, that. you wouldn't be like, let's get the fuck out of here. It de- I mean, it depends on. It's very like at what point on the trek downstairs. See, but this is this is the fundamental di- difference between men and women. Women live their life in fear. Yeah. So we hear that and we say, "Get the fuck out of here," because I'm definitely oh, no. not coming yeah. out of this live. Where you're like, "No, let's go poke around and see what happens." And it's yep to a certain yeah. point. I don't know what the point would be. I don't because um, you can't what you tell expecting? what you're going to be. I don't. <sighs> Well, I, th- I would go down this. If maybe you would, if you I, would risk your own I, safety rather than believe a woman. But may, uh, that's but see that's too like 
Is it because it's, it's coming it's, from it's a woman, or is it more just like I haven't it's seen this? Woman, it's a, a curiosity. Guy, no, if you it, came yeah, if it's up a and guy, did the same thing, I would want to see thing. it. Yeah. The woman has nothing to do so with it. So your curiosity become, comes yeah. before your personal safety. Well, because yes. when I was watching it, when point, I was in her I, position... See, women don't live that way. I know. But it's, I, it, like, because because we can just be minding our business and get murdered. So like we right, have, we, exactly, can't, no, we cannot no, be curious. I get that. I understand that. But again, I wouldn't know what point. If I saw a door in a basement wall that opened up with a rope... yeah. As soon as I might be gone after that. I don't well, know. Well, see, I don't know, because when I was, you know, you're trying to put yourself in the position of the characters, and when Tess does find yes. that, and she opens that up. I mean, I was sitting there going, like, fuck, I'm dead, because I would want to see what, you know, and I think, as I was explaining during while we were watching it, it's like, I think the fact that, you know, everything's been quiet, uh, you know, the neighborhood seems abandoned, so the, I guess there's that sense of, like, okay, well, whatever has happened here happened a happened long already. time ago and so this is like an empty place and so i think my curiosity would take me in but when i was trying to put myself in her po- or yeah his position going like i gotta see it i'm like i don't know if i would do that i i might be like okay there's a what all right yeah let's she go told get, him there let's was go a get bloody the handprint. authorities and you know we'll bring cops here or something that we can get the fuck out she told him there was a bloody handprint and he yeah. said i need to see it yeah but i mean this is for the movie i we, wouldn't make it too far in a horror yeah, movie yeah. i guess no you <laughs> wouldn't. I, i'm going to i would I, but i wouldn't go down the stairs into the the tunnels underneath the, i mean but no. do we know he did that voluntarily we don't know see, we don't what know. happened That's to him true. yeah we, we don't, don't know, know. We don't know how far yeah. he got before someone was just like Rah! yeah yeah because he disappears and then there's that whole thing of you know she has to i was i was actually kind of i mean just the way that the movie uh was laid out um you know it's like she spends the night in the house and there's that scene where the door to her bedroom opens mm-hmm. did he open it or did uh, you see you know, the door close behind her in the hallway? Yeah, too. so yeah. a lady came up. And so and it's like, is there someone else in the house? Then, then you're like, yeah, there is somebody else like hanging out in the house. But she gets to leave, you know, and go on this job interview. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, oh, this is an interesting that we're not keeping it all like locked to that location. They get out, both of them, during yep. the day. It's the second night when they come back that right. uh, she actually finds the, you know, she gets locked in the, the basement stairwell and then finds the uh, passageway, I guess. The what that scene of him being like, what there's a thing down there, you know, I got to see it. That was when my suspicious went. My suspicion went back on. He was so insistent because, about yeah, it he because of his insist. I get that there's insistent. a curiosity, but I guess I thought he's literally movie, physically holding her well, and not letting not her walk out the that, door. But this also the setup uh, of this movie, I think, is very well and leads to that because he just had a great night with a woman, and he doesn't let, he doesn't want to let that moment go. Uh, that is part of the reason why mm-hmm. he's like, don't leave. Oh, no, the only I, reason I don't anything in this movie happens is because they're attracted to each other. Yes. Like, she would not be going down in the basement to chase after him if she didn't find him a trick. Right. And he is... would not be insisting she stay if they hadn't had a great night yes. the night before. Yeah, yeah but that was, yeah. A, that was an interesting dynamic that was kind of layered on that. You know, it's like you got two people. Just give me the sex in, scene. <laughs> in, in this situation with each other. And it's like, well, how do you play this? Off? You know, mm-hmm. I mean, like, what is the correct thing to do? When you're like, you know, okay, well, you just stay here. Mm-hmm. You know, you take the bed, I'll take the couch, you know, and you're like, well, is he, is he trying to, you know, do something, but he's really awkward about it, yeah. you know? And I think that diffused, mm-hmm. you know, my suspicion of him. Well, it can diffuse it or you can, it be can like, make it worse. Is it an yeah. act? Because like, the- is he being a bumbling guy to draw her in? Well, yeah. and awkward Again. people commit crimes too you know but so like the, like, line like the wine writes. scene the wine scene is very uncomfortably awkward not charming awkward you yes. know what i'm saying yeah, that yeah. wine scene but is like good. dude stop yeah. talking you're making it worse you yeah. know yeah. like up. but see yeah. that's yeah that's good that yeah. rides that line just like oh shit he i don't is, know what to do he is doing a magnificent balancing act yes. here between like being overly eager and too invested in her life yeah. and also like awkwardly charming at the same time yeah because yeah. uh, i think yeah. it is a thing that they're attracted to each other It'd be a different you know mood movie if one was attracted the other one wasn't or yep. they both weren't attracted mm-hmm. but i think that I mean, does kind of permeate it it's like is there going to be a relationship here you know uh i think there probably would have been if uh oh, yeah. if, if the events of night two didn't happen right especially because of their, in- <laughs> their interests <laughs> yes yeah. obviously because of their interests and everything because you know they hit it off the yeah. thing that makes him really suspicious is there's too many coincidences with him it when he he asks her what she's in town for and she says right. she's interviewing with this director who did this uh, 
obscure jazz documentary from last year and he had seen it and like new details about it and she's like so charmed by this and you're like yeah he's saying all the right things this is a problem because he's done research or something like that i suppose that's where they want you to or he's just kind of like yes anding her until she hears what she wants to hear you know yeah Yeah. so but he's got details so he actually yeah yeah, he actually did see it and then it turns out he's part of the group that she's probably going to be doing a documentary about coincidence but she finds this door in the basement that leads mm-hmm. to this tunnel. And then when he goes uh, missing, right, because he goes down there and then, yeah. of course, he disappears. Uh, and she goes down there and she's wandering through this. Uh, what is it? A 30 foot hallway in the dark, you know, with this yep. room off yep. of it. And we'll then explain she's how we know like, where the later. fuck did where did where did she where did he go? You know, and then she finds there's another hidden door, uh, another <laughs> and that door. leads into there's a stairway that leads into the bowels of the earth. And at this point, you're like, okay, you know, I mean, now we're getting this is some serious shit. Yeah, <laughs> I would die in this movie. Didn't we discuss during Fire in the Sky? I'd be the one that gets you would be by the one that gets yeah, because yep, yep, yep. of the yep. curiosity. Yeah, yeah. 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 Curiosity will be the downfall. Yep. At some point, you just got to listen to that, you know, the hair standing up in the back of your neck or mm-hmm. something. And mm. Early on, when that when that when her bedroom door swings open while she's sleeping, and then we see the other door close, when I first saw this, I was like, oh, no, because I thought it was going to be supernatural. And I was like, if this is just a haunted house, I'm going to be so disappointed. Yeah. Oh, and see. so I was pleasantly surprised that it was not that. Okay, my mm-hmm. first thought went to like, you know, uh, you're next or some kind of tortured dudes hanging out in the, you know, whatever. It was just the way her bedroom door swung open and they zoomed in on it. It had like a weird sound effect. Yeah. It was, it made it seem like magical or spiritual the way it happened. You know? I thought there was a voice this time watching it. Maybe I missed it the, the, when that door opens. I thought it sounded like, it sounded like yeah. the, 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 the yeah. whatever sound. Yeah she makes mm-hmm. well she does find him he comes scuttling out of the darkness and stand up dude someone, don't just scuttle at someone in the well, middle of a it dark turns tunnel out that he's been bit though. someone bit so me someone bit so me. he's been what? bit really hard on the leg apparently and he's scuttling <laughs> and he's like we got to get out of here and he's like we need to go this way not back it went it's that way a labyrinthian went... tunnel apparently this yes. thing is fucking huge yeah like, i don't think we know at that point how i mean later on you yeah. find out that well i mean as well, at least we'll part of it talk yeah. about that but uh yeah, it's just like this cavernous place, mm. and she sees that there's cages. Dog mm. cages with bulls. Yeah, no. and then we're like, oh, no, somebody's been... We know that there's a, the, the the um like the snuff room, yeah. and then there's like the cages, cages and yep. like Gates. there's four cages, like, oh, yep. oh, God, what's going on? And Ooh. then, uh, so he's trying to get her to, to leave. I'd be puking from the smell the entire time. Yeah, I think that's yeah. Keep me out of right? I yeah, mean, not a lot of smell ventilation. Will do it. Yeah, the, they should have all been gagging constantly, right? Yeah. I mean, like, Justin Long does. He get does his, cover. He does yeah, shirt his mouth. Yeah. a yeah. bunch of times, and it's right. but, man. Oh, yeah, I'm sure <sighs> it's it's rank. Mm-hmm. Yes, and then a crazy fucking monster comes scuttling out of the or screeching out of the dark and yes. bangs his head against the wall and smashes it in a little red and the movie's over and, and it's and been 40 minutes yells in her face <laughs> yeah cut to black yeah okay so what are you thinking at this point i when legit saw- was like okay so i when i first saw this when they get what got down to the basement i said to my husband i was like why are they already in the basement already i was like this feels like this should be the third act mm. i was like what well, i was like they are rushing to the end here what is this movie because it's like is this i, I was like is this just a 40 minute movie like is this a short <laughs> yeah or something or is this an anthology and i don't know it uh i was especially the cut to black i was like okay is this is this an anthology and then the next scene i was like is this an anthology like i because it cuts it, to the bright blue ocean and the pacific coast highway and somebody driving some, like down. 60s music playing yep. yeah and yeah. then we get spoiler well, alert a, a spoiler hard spoiler big, hard big spoiler. time spoiler which i think th- unfortunately this was ruined for me that justin long i saw a picture the movie. before i saw the movie yeah he was on a talk show talking about this was his new movie and i thought that was a, after seeing it i'm like well because when i saw it i'm like oh i didn't know mm-hmm. justin long was in the movie mm-hmm. that would have been a surprise yeah. yes and i think i was kind of upset that that was ruined for me mm-hmm. that he was in it right. but I mean, because then it becomes for the second act, it's Justin Long's movie. And right. you're yes. like, oh, this is a, like a whole different thing. Mm. And how does this connect to 
the what we were just watching for the first, you know, whatever, 40 minutes or whatever. It right? takes so long to connect the dots, and that's ballsy. Uh, like, is. you could lose your audience so easily. But they do it in a fun way. First, they start, it's more upbeat when we get to Justin Long and cut to this part. We come from a, what should be a very intense moment mm-hmm. where we meet our monster, mm-hmm. and then we cut to, you get the scare and the release when we come with Justin mm-hmm. Long that comes in. But the and music... It's a fun... This starts a fun part of the movie. But the music starts playing over the gr- black screen still before yes. you see him. So that's what also makes it feel like credits and like the movie's over yeah, with. You're like, what? Yeah. I, it throws you off, mm-hmm. which is good. Yeah. I like that because then I was, you know, I mean, I guess as far as keeping you engaged, I guess that's the thing that th- this movie really did for me was I was always trying to think like what was happening, yes. who was, you know, who do I trust here in that first segment? Then it's like, okay, now there's a whole other thing. And I'm like, well, how does this connect? And I guess maybe I had thought like, well, he, you know, somehow he's tied to it. Does he own the house or something like that? He's an actor right in uh, California or Hollywood. Mm -hmm. And he has been, he's finding out that he's been accused of sexual assault. He raped somebody, right? Or we don't know that we, there's an accusation. And I guess then this part of the thing is playing on like, well, did he, or did he not do it? Cause you're watching like, his career implodes. Everybody starts. Okay, but the but away from the way him. he talks about it, you're not on his side. You, it, this movie it's, is from the jump is doesn't want you to believe him. They they do. I think it's very well written in that regard. And what little I'm going to bury that fucking bitch. He says that well, to what, his financial advisor. Yeah, little feel, details if it was, that if it was, come through I in his conversations with other people. Right, but he, it doesn't make you look innocent to say that. Is what I'm saying. I'm no, saying no. even if you are innocent, if you're telling people around you, I'm going to bury that fucking bitch. It doesn't sound great. Yeah, but it sounds, I guess, like a normal, like a, like a, you know, it's an angry response that you'd have. But see, again, this helped with like, is he innocent? And yeah. he's being set up because I think he would feel that way when we find out, you know, that he actually, well, he admits to uh, the yes. front of his that he did it. Mm-hmm. Then you're like, okay, you know, it's like, well, then. So you guys were buying his story up until then. I didn't know. No, but Re- oh my but god, I think this guy doing- was a douchebag from the jump. Are you kidding me? I mean, but well, the, I think this is the other thing. Like, how do you feel about? Because they're also using the way they used it for Bill Skarsgård. They're using it for Justin yeah. Long, the baggage you bring in with him yeah. as a person. Yeah, yeah, yeah And yeah. he comes in singing and likable right off the bat, that and was, you don't yeah. know anything. I think about that's because we were talking. The that- way he's talking to his agents on the phone is pretty shitty. Well, in that's that what scene. gets But they're just saying that he. He's a Hollywood, you know, type. I mean, you know, for all you. No, I'm just saying he's there, an but, asshole. They, yeah, I'm not. You guys are saying I'm he's likable. I'm saying no. They start off with him being an asshole. They're bringing the fact that you like Justin Long, right? But his stuff. character's Bring, not yeah, not meant to be likable in any scene of this movie. I think he starts out. He's. Are you we, kidding me? No, Even he, that scene in the car, you think he's likable? Up to a certain point, yeah. He, that conversation goes south pretty quickly. I said up to a certain point. And there's a lot of like humor that comes from the scenes that he's in that I think maybe you could read as he's It's likable, usually at his expense, think, though. It's at his yes. expense, yeah. Um, you were saying Zac Efron. Zac was Efron, actually, was, they wrote this role with him in mind. And I like... I, I understand where they're coming from with that because like he is a like leading man, A-list, classically handsome dude that like a, like a jock, right? And so it may like... I kind of wish they would have gone in more in that direction, but I can see why someone who is maybe very image conscious doesn't want to do a movie like this. I can see why you might not want to portray a guy who raped, raped his co-star, you know, yeah. like, but, true, I think- but he also did play Bundy at a certain point. Yeah, but that's, that's different because this, that like, this is a little snake eating its own tail, you know, an actor playing an actor that is accused of sexual assault. Yeah. You, you, it might, it might put microscopes on you that you don't want on you. You know well, what I'm sure, saying? So yeah. I can see, I can see, but I do, th- my thing with Justin Long is that to me, he always comes off as like a nerdy guy, mm-hmm. not like a leading man, like classically handsome guy. Right. So that's yeah. why I kind of wish they would have gone more that direction to show that like douchebags can, like the per- people that perpetrate these crimes can be like model handsome you but know what i'm somehow, saying somehow i think if it was zach efron in that part like i i don't know i don't again this is how i'm reading his character and where i was sitting there going like okay is he just being accused or did he actually do it mm. i think zach efron i would have read as like okay he like did it right from the get-go i mean maybe i would have had that with his you know bringing like his character like they would have more of an edge mm-hmm. than justin long the, yeah, the yeah. Mac guy. A Mac. yeah yeah, yeah. 
He's um, kind of a nerdy dude. Like, yeah, and you've seen him as like you know, I mean, uh, uh, rom coms as, as yeah. love interests and stuff like yeah. that. Yeah, and maybe the horror audience Accepted. is seeing him as uh, you know, uh, <laughs> yeah. Jeepers yeah. Creepers too. So you're like, you know, drag um, me to hell. Previous episode, right? Yeah. You know, uh, that's why I'm like his casting is fucking spot on yeah. because it does kind of you know ki- give you that kind of ambiguity until it like you know it's like well there's no more ambiguity and then. The rest of the his, the movie is him trying to redeem himself, but it's like it's you know it's it's but it's cool but it's what they do twisted, with his character. Yeah, it's that twisted thinking that people like him would have. Like the, 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 he has the no self awareness. The right. ego, the no self awareness, yeah. and also, and it gets just real. Um, said again later in the movie the way he talks is like I had no. You were slipping. I had no choice. Yeah. Like in those yeah. moments, yeah. he will yeah. go that way. Yeah. Well, yeah, okay. there was a point in this movie where I thought they were going to give him a redemption arc. And I was like, if this movie does that, right, this is the right, worst movie right. I've ever yeah, seen. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah. And I think it's because I think it's easier would to be, do with yeah. Justin Long than Zac Efron. Yep. It's like, maybe you could redeem but it. The, and like the way they even push in the camera and they, the way the music nice, swells on the scene, yeah. it is very like of scenes you've seen like that. Yes. And that's why I was about ready to start punching the chair. If I was like, <laughs> if they do this, oh my God. And thankfully I was wrong. Yeah. But yeah, they, and that was another way that like, they just flip your emotions on you like that. They're yeah. really good at subverting your expectations. It yeah. does. Yeah. I, I mean, this is because Kreger, he wrote and directed Proust or just wrote and directed. Mm-hmm. But I mean like, you know, so he was like completely in control of all this stuff, yeah. which is, I mean, I, construction being one thing, of mm-hmm. the movie, but also I think like the characters, like they do kind of live in these, uh, you know, mm-hmm. in these personalities where you can yeah. actually see like, yeah, this guy has no real self-awareness. He, uh, because of his financial collapse, says something about like, well, I can sell those properties in Michigan. And you're like, oh, OK, so he Uh-oh. owns a house. So he has to go to Michigan. And so he goes to the house and is just completely like, well, I guess his headspace, he's in a different place right <laughs> and we find out through like the dialogue because he calls the agent and she says you know because he's finding uh luggages and 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 people uh, sh- people have been sleeping in the bed been sleeping in my bed and yeah little goldilocks right there mm-hmm. but when he calls she says that there hasn't been anybody there in weeks yeah. and so we're like oh shit it's been weeks that yeah (laughs) i didn't pick up on that the first time i watched this i think it was like the second time i watched this i noticed that because i at first the first time i watched this i thought this is maybe like three days Mm -hmm. span and then oh my god she's been down there for weeks yeah oh in the dark in that same outfit yeah yeah eating the same stuff yep She's had to pee for so long. I know because that's what sends her to the basement. We yeah. uh, I recognized on this one was because yeah. they were out of toilet paper. Yeah. So I'm like, oh, she needed to pee, and she's had to pee for uh, the whole the whole rest of the movie. And that is uh, a very Airbnb <laughs> thing where like they only put one roll of toilet paper in the bathroom, and then you got to go on a fucking scavenger hunt to find the rest of it. It's and like then you find the closet <laughs> and it's got yeah. bed sheets and yeah. just like a bulk of everything yeah except toilet paper right, the yeah. one thing you need like the most essential thing yeah what? it's always like that you're gonna stock it up there's gonna mm-hmm. be like a list or something if you're hosting a bed uh airbnb where like well it's all up to them no problem. That's, really? the, that's the that's the thing they don't give you a list like you might want like it's all up to the owner it's Ooh. it's you're renting a, a private property airbnb too long if people are just like uh, they had no toilet paper uh, yeah. zero stars yeah um so he's dealing with his personal crises and ends up uh, like not observing what's actually going on. And eventually, I think it's the next day that he finally goes, you know, I should go find out what the hell's going on in the basement. Yeah. Because uh, there might be somebody here. And so he wanders down there. And I think there's because um, I was I was keenly aware of this, too. I was like, what? How are you going to get this guy to go further in right this is part of your plot and the movie relies on the well he hears a sound there's always a sound at two points there's a sound at a key moment that would have been because i think um the only reason he knows that there's a secret door was because he hears a sound yes he's looking at the mirror that was set up before and then he hears a sound and whips Mm -hmm. around he's like and then he kind of sees the door and again catches the rope and then yeah reveals the secret and so he finds the labyrinth but his first i mean it it played 
funnier, I guess, my first viewing oh, in yeah. the theater where there's laughter. I mean, this sequence was hilarious. It wasn't mm-hmm. as funny this time watching it. I don't know why. Because well, we've seen I mean, it, you, you, the, the again, jokes, the shots, well, like, you, know, yeah. you know better the joke. But yeah. when you're in the theater, it, it, he starts, uh, it, he sees the space, and then it cuts to him Googling, can a uh, basement uh, footage be equated into the value of a home or right. whatever like he's looking at the square footage and see if he can add to it to add more money to that which house. like that's already a funny joke in and of itself but then yeah. they take it a step further where he scrolls on google until he finds the answer he wants right like because the first again adds to his character yeah. that's what he wants yeah, yeah. Like, we gotta yeah. find the thing that i want and it's not even a direct answer it's like is not usually and he's like well usually okay right. like he's, we he's, can work with that he's yeah. like yeah bitch yep i yeah. love i love that they took it that joke a step further and it's not just like he he took the first Google answer. No, he scrolled yeah. until he found what he was looking he, for. He will go until he gets the answer he wants. Yeah. apparently. And you know, is. Yeah. he's a rich asshole because he threw that MacBook. Yeah, because no yeah. poor. Per- because no so poor when I saw this, I saw this movie <laughs> theaters point. twice, and the, some of the biggest crowd reactions was him throwing that MacBook because he hucks that thing. He does, and that's two thousand dollars he's At throwing least, in yeah. the air, and it's it's so they're so fragile the way they're made that sometimes you close them too hard and they break, and this guy's throwing it like that is great shorthand for rich asshole that doesn't yeah. give a fuck. Yes, yeah. and yeah. it gets look at the reaction yeah. it would get because it got a reaction from people there too. Yeah. yeah. Oh. Don't, yeah. don't throw that. Yeah. And I always wonder, like, I mean, you know, you wonder who came up with that. Was it in the script? Was it the director suggesting it? Or was it the actor? Who and did the way it, like, it perfectly know, landed yeah. was kind of satisfying, just, too. Just, thing? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but he goes down there you know, with the tape uh, measurer. Right. And yes. you're like, he's they show him in the room with the uh, the camera, the camera bucket. The bed. And the, and he's just sitting there. Unfazed. Yeah. Sean, like, that would be you, though, apparently. <laughs> no. <laughs> well, I, well I mean, you said you said you're. Right. curiosity you'd have to go see it but not to measure it for footage anymore. no but he's he saw it and he was unfazed would you be unfazed i would, if you I, saw would that? Be phased. Yeah. I would be phased would you regret your curiosity at that point at a certain point yes but, i would but th- this yeah but this scenario is different than the yeah, previous this is, yeah, one this is very different, because yeah. the idea that you know when she went down there when bill skarsgård went down there it was all like this is a very creepy place and you know you're filled with the, the tension uh, Justin Long's down there, like just measuring shit and like, you know, oh, fuck. I mean, he has yes. no idea. He has no no concept of where he's at just based on him sitting in the. Yeah, like the, his the, perspective, the, it doesn't go to room. It all goes from what's, I guess, what's in your head yeah. and what you're thinking of because it just doesn't this. come to him. A yeah. cleaning crew will come and take this shit out. It, is no the, is concept this a, of what it was actually used for. Is this for. another like rich person thing where it's like, I don't have to care about these sort of things, right? Like. Is it, just, I what it is, is it a that, lack of self awareness? It's, it's a lack of something, whether it's, it's a, being rich or what it's, have you, or it, being in these it's situations. A, it's a, it's a, uh, a narcissism. Yeah, and that's a, probably a, a, a self navel gazing, self obsession yeah. yeah. that threatens to overrun our entire system. But he clearly, <laughs> he has this idea of being like untouchable, though, too, right? Yeah. So. I think that's just like he Which lives is, in his own reality, you know. Right, and it's all he's hitting all these barriers because that's probably how he's gone through life. Yeah, just being untouchable, and now right. all these uh, consequences are coming down. Yeah, and he is being touched. That's a good word for it. Consequences. Literally, he's touched. finally dealing with yes. consequences. Finally, yeah. something is catching up. With right, him. this but, just happens to be a giant toothed mongoloid lady because <laughs> he meets her. Well, he finds a room because we're like, okay, so who the. F- what the hell is yeah. this monster? Yeah. I mean, I guess you see that it's a naked woman, spindly naked woman, you know. Like Which, unfortunately, we've seen and, this a lot. This, this is yeah. kind of the, 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 the little thing I can ding this movie for. Yes. This design we've seen a, a few too wreck, many times before. Uh, it's Wreck, it's Mama, yeah. it's um, it's yeah. It Part 2. Yeah. It's, yeah. We've seen it's, it a little I mean, too hell, much. Hell, it's wrong lately. turn. Like anything yeah. that, you know, after, I, I can't remember at what point the flashback comes in, but, you know, it's what you would expect from years of inbreeding yeah we'll say yeah yeah although i still i'm not sure exactly what's going on there but we're we're about to get there but mm-hmm. so he ends up uh discovering that yes it is a complete total labyrinth right mm-hmm. and then he falls into a hole baby well he, he passes the baby room where the, oh yeah the nursing room but then it's the nurse yeah there's a nursery like uh, there's like an old two pass the TV. room in a labyrinthine basement with just Happy breastfeeding videos playing on a small <laughs> TV on the ground. And like like sleeping bags all over the floor or something. Yeah, and blankets. Oh, it's like a again, nest. It's like the, a nest. The smell. Yeah, yeah, it was the only lit room, I think, in the entire basement. Yeah. Which yes. also makes you question exactly what's going on down there. 
you know, is she living down there in the dark and wandering around? Is there ever any kind of light? You know, she's, she's become adjusted. Well, right. he's later. well like, later in the movie. The the homeless man says she comes out at night. Yeah, oh, yeah. 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 But I mean, that's pitch black. You no mm-hmm. moonlight or anything mm-hmm. to see by. Um, but anyway, yeah, it turns out Tess is still alive. Thank God. <laughs> yeah. Tess is still alive. Yeah, he and... falls into a hole. Oh, yeah, that's it. He falls into the hole. Tess is still alive right there. She goes, shh. The gate comes cut. down on top of him when he falls in the hole. Yep. Right. So they we have converged now. Our yep. first uh, storyline has converged with our second storyline. And as soon as that happens, flashback. Now, yeah, yeah, that and was... this is another time where I was like, wait. <laughs> right, right? Anthology? Yes. Is it happening now? <laughs> what is happening? Like, because the aspect ratio changes, and when you don't yeah. see the slow change, it is a hard cut yep. to a new aspect you're like, ratio. Oh, yeah. But now we're four by three. Four by three. Everything's in the colorful. Perfect picturesque. Uh, I'll say fifties. What? What? When is the eighties? Perfect picturesque uh, lined uh, suburban neighborhood street. Mm-hmm. They say something about Reagan on the radio. So and, they do. Uh, yeah. it's, it's very uh, colorful. Music by Asia. Is yes. Mm-hmm. Uh, everything is. You know, it's that bright, perfect, colorful. Lawns are perfectly made. Yeah. We're seeing the, the house. The house. Yep. And this was where I was like, "Oh shit, this movie's got money." Because then I was <laughs> like, "That means." That they built this entire neighborhood and then distressed it later on for the actual uh, movie. I looked up the budget. How much? 4.5. It's pretty small, I feel like. But filmed in Bulgaria where yeah, you get a true. deal yeah. on your, I assume. But I mean, it way. made 45. It was a huge fucking hit. So Yeah. 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 For a lot of mm-hmm. word of mouth. I think yeah. I also read it was like the number one streamed movie for like, you know, so mm-hmm. long after it came out. Um, but we met, we meet. Richard, Richard Brake, Brake. Uh, which Sean artist. and I both shudder at the same time. Finest role. Okay, yeah. so what? Okay, I, I guess maybe I don't have the same. Like whenever we mention his name, <laughs> you guys react, and I'm like, what? So it's, it's thirty one. Rob Zombie's fault. It's oh, thirty one. Yeah. Thirty one ruined. I him. didn't. I didn't like him in. Uh, he's in Halloween too. Rob Zombie's Halloween too. Oh, and, he's uh, awful in that. He's awful. Yeah. I don't. He's like, an I just awful don't like it because he comes from the. There's a certain level of Rob Zombie's vulgarity that I don't like. Yeah, but, and he has become a representation well, of that right. to me. I also have another reason not like him. He winked at me at Flashback oh, Weekend, and I go. didn't like that. So <laughs> it made me uncomfortable. Okay, and I already didn't like him before that. That did not yeah, help. Yeah, so that wouldn't that wouldn't help anybody. Didn't like it. But so, yes, there's also, I'm again, Pete, uh, us, it feels like, uh, like we've talked about before, um, a casting on point. Because again, another actor that you're going to bring baggage with. I yeah. think if you're a fan of these movies going into it. Yeah, I, I assume like who knows who he is, but a core, a horror audience, I suppose, would, right? Yes. Is this movie made for a core horror audience? Feels like it, the way they mess with everything. I think so. I thought that, yeah, I thought this was one of those movies where like, the Craiger knows horror movies yes. so well that he knows where your head is at as mm-hmm. a horror movie uh, watcher. Right. That, that's why he's fucking with you. Yeah. He's like, you oh, know? no, we're not going down this part yeah, of the we're, gonna we're do going this. down this one. Yeah. But Richard Brake does look like an 80s serial killer, doesn't he? Yes. Like, he's got the perfect face yeah. for yeah, this role. He's a sinister looking guy. Uh, and he only has like eight lines, which also makes it great. Yeah. Like, I don't know if he, I've ever seen him in. Uh, I mean, I only became aware of who he was uh, through Rob Zombie's Thirty One. Mm-hmm. Then realized he was in Halloween Two, and he was in Three from Hell. He basically mm-hmm. yeah. replaced. Been Game of Thrones too. That's probably his biggest thing, right? Yeah, yeah right, he was the yeah. Night King mm-hmm. in like, several episodes. And see, like that's replaced. different because he's in so much makeup. It's yeah. not Richard Brake at that yeah. point, you yeah. know. And he's become one of those actors where you probably you're watching an, an old movie. And you're like, oh, mm-hmm. Richard Brake. Mm-hmm. Like yeah. you recognize him more as you go back. Mm-hmm. But this is also, in addition to the four by three, it's also shot with like a fisheye lens, this entire sequence, Mm -hmm. Uh, some interesting camera work. We watched this guy come out of this house that we've been spending time in, but it's the past. Mm -hmm. And he goes to a hardware store and he's picking out plastic sheets, which we know are, Mm -hmm. you know, serial killer stuff Mm -hmm. and um, and baby baby material diapers, dry, diapers and all that stuff because he's got one on the way first mm-hmm. one yeah and you're so like okay well we know right home birth that, home yeah. birth yeah. that's important so we're like okay is this guy like richard break saying home birth is yeah, uh, yeah. That, that's the t-shirt <laughs> yeah, richard break like, with a shopping cart yeah, looking at you birth. and it just says home birth that's horrifying oh, yeah that's gross no. like, maybe this is one of those that's movies terrifying. that you can pause at any time and it's terrifying <laughs> you know maybe it's one of those things like, like every every out of context right. was, too picturesque is, yeah the toothless yep. old hag yep yeah well stuff. he uh I'm, I'm curious like what i mean obviously we see 
he follows a woman that he spies in the parking lot. Not just a woman, Kate Bosworth, apparently. Was it? Yeah. I was looking at the cast list and I was like, where was she in this movie? She's the door? She's she's the one that answers the door and then and he's like, I'm with DWP, can I check the the water lines? And she has like literally three lines. Is she friends with the director or something? Why is she doing this? Like I know the guy, uh, Craiger, is is he married to He's Sarah married to Paxton? Sarah Paxton, yeah. yeah. And yeah. she's the voice of the, the nursing video. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. The voices, I want to, I'm going to have to look at the cast. Yeah. Later. Some of the voices sounded familiar because yeah. the agents over the phone and all that mm-hmm. stuff. Um, I mean, the next door neighbor is a, is Kurt Brownholder. Yeah. yeah he's he's been comedian. in so much. Yeah. yeah. Who plays mm-hmm. that perfectly with his just mustache and his like. Yes. Perfect. It's like, oh, we're the, you might see a sign in the yard. We're, <laughs> yeah. we're moving. The wife yeah. thinks we should move yeah. you know, before we can't do it. So this he's is like great. the neighborhood's going downtown. <laughs> the neighborhood's going to hell, man. Yeah, but that, <laughs> like is that perfect. when he starts going like, well, if everybody's going to move out, then I can go and like build this, you know, because the, the labyrinth that he has created in the, the basement must connect to oh it's below the grade of other bases yes yeah like it's way down there oh, it yeah. goes off and tunnels going everywhere and you i assume this is like a lifelong project yeah. right yeah, yeah. like he like started it. it 40 years ago and up until he couldn't do it anymore so I he's guess. like he's burrowing under his neighbors i mean it's like a block probably it's it feels huge. like Maybe he just slowly captured them all and that's why the whole street got abandoned it's like mm-hmm. God, he's down below water lines and tree mm. roots and all that so anyway so <laughs> Colin's thinking of the, home, <laughs> the homeowner angle of it. Well, he's down in the bedrock. It yeah. seems yeah, like yeah. And you're like, how did he do this? But whatever. Okay. This is the, the movie. Mm-hmm. It's there. Yeah. Can't question that. It's yeah. just, there, there is a labyrinth under the entire neighborhood that's been ab- abandoned. There's this uh, uh, thing going on underneath it. So we're like, okay, so he is a serial rapist. He captures these women and brings them back. He videotapes them. We, I guess we don't know that mm-hmm. yet. Well, we know because of the camera. Yeah. We found out later that like he's got a videotape collection labeled of all these as such, like just toothless. the puker, toothless. Yeah, no, te- yeah, There's no te- names. Scr- the, yeah, screamer, blind, blind. Ugh. But then other ones will be like gas station redhead. Like it's yeah, very, yeah. it's very all over the place. It's the thing that jumped out to him apparently. Yeah, just, mm-hmm. that's the name of it. Blah. Yeah. So help me out then. So who is the mother, the creature? One of the children of him. Yeah, I think we've gone a few generations. They say that. They, so how old he is says, she? He said 40 years. He said she's been living down there damn near 40 years. Okay, the homeless so guy he's been this. doing this for a lot longer than uh, than with the flashback, right? Well, yeah. that was the start of it. It must have been, right? True, well, it would have yeah. been 40 years ago. Yeah, yeah in the 80s? Yeah, yes, but, it would've. But, would have. But I later on, a character is telling us, and this is the homeless guy yeah. who mm-hmm. initially we think is coming to attack uh, right. Tess. Yes. But it turns out he's actually like, you got to get out of that. Stop she stop she comes out at night and he gives us a whole big backstory that I'm like, how the fuck does he know this? But he's like, yeah, he's been down there, you know, like he bring women down there mm-hmm. and he's been having babies with them. And then he's been having babies with their babies. And this is the product of that. I'm like, mm-hmm. okay, well that's more than 40 years unless she's fairly young. Yeah. She could be like 20 year old. Uh, uh, you know, I creature. think that that looks like uh, uh, time. There's there's a lot of there's inbreeding a lot of wear there. on those on yeah, those tires. I will say that's, that's true. Like, yeah, yeah. It feels like she's been around for a while. I think. Yeah. Oh, I was gonna say something. I forgot it now. Uh, nope. Well, Justin Long. Cut back to the present. Justin Long and Tess are able to escape. Well, first of all. Uh, we can't the skip. We can't, yeah, we can't, skip, can't the skip the most horrifying scene in this entire because movie. We, we get back down and they're in the hole. And, 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 and I mean, obviously, Tess has been there for a little bit. So she's telling him, be quiet. If you get excited, she gets excited. You don't want that. And then uh, you hear the mom has come back and then just a, a giant baby bottle. It is, is like. It is like over full though, so it's kind of like swollen and yeah, the, like the oh, nipple is the swollen, nipple swollen and, and, it's, and and she's it's bulbousy and she's jabbing it at them like drink, drink, you must, you're my babies, drink. Yeah. Yeah. And 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 Tess is telling just drink it, just don't piss her off. And so and then she drinks out of it, yeah, and there's hair on the nipple, yeah. and it's long, nasty, like like Samara, gr- gross hair. And it doesn't you know? look like there's any refrigeration down there, so who no. knows how warm this bleh, no. milk is? <laughs> bleh, bleh. And okay, see, I I point. Pointed out moments in the past of upsetting milk in movies, and this is, it's all milk. led to this moment, I yeah. guess. Right, the most uh, upsetting milk moment in movies, probably. Right. We should have an upsetting milk scale. Uh, yeah, a T-shirt. Yeah, it's like ding, 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 ding. Well, it was at this point, I guess, I was making comparisons to 
new Don't Breathe, right? Because it has the turkey baster in yeah. the basement. So this one's got the uh, the, the well, milk bottle just, in the basement. It's not just turkey baster. It's two movies about underground breeding in yep. Detroit. Yeah. 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 What a yeah. weird thing I to know. happen twice. Yeah. What's going I, on, Detroit? All, well, yeah. I, it's all about those, like, what happens to the places that are just abandoned, and who goes in there, and what happens. We don't yeah. know. Yeah. yeah. We have no idea. But, man, don't breathe. That was a real turn. When I saw that movie, I was like, <laughs> oh, my God, this is, this is from places I did not expect. <sighs> well, this one, I didn't expect to see Justin Long being uh, forced to breastfeed from uh, a yeah. mutant, uh, you know, and then, well, she, monster th- woman. That's what made Zac Efron say no, right? <laughs> I mean, probably. He was like, oh, like, I God. I can't do this. But, I mean, she hoists him out of that pit which i mean gives us we're slowly getting ideas of like how strong this woman can yeah. be because of stuff like that keeps happening and then, and then later on as well um but she yeah hoists him out of there and takes him to the nursing room and with the very happy breastfeeding video on she tries yeah. to yeah she tries to get him the latch yeah it's pretty it gross pretty gross well, there's a bunch of like, you know, there's, uh, she, uh, Tess is able to escape and, you know, there's somebody down there who's being murdered and, you know, I got to go talk to the police. Right. But at the same, same time, he, uh, Justin Long gets free and is able to find Richard Brake is still alive. Yes. Uh, in like a little room. Yeah, down the way. He's and just mom doesn't want to go in there. Yeah. So who's been taking care of him? I don't know, but it's I like think, I think he she had does, a, he's he had the, the bell. bell. Oh, and that's that he when, rings. Yeah, that's the only time she was permitted to come into. I the, think so. The so I'm to call you. You come, but then, yeah. I mean, but like you're saying, like Tess uh, gets out, gets back up to the basement. Um, she knocks into the the uh, measuring tape, which alerts Mama, and so there's a whole thing, and she's got to escape through the basement, which is what leads to one of the. Uh, better shots of the movie that I like when she gets out and the homeless man pulls her away oh, yeah. from the window mm-hmm. and she like the at monster the monster reaches, reaches yeah. out of the window but then goes yeah back. yeah it's it was a good, good. Shot. Yeah. it's a good shot good horror movie shot it is because it also it just reminded me of you remember the shot from Signs where the hands yeah. are coming underneath yes. the door yeah, and they're yeah. pulling back yeah, yeah it yeah, just yeah. reminds me of that I'm just like ooh I love that creepiness yeah it's a good shot and I like that they they do give you like close up looks of at this thing, but there's yes. a lot of movement. It seems like in those moments, so I'm never really sure. It took me a little while to get like a full grasp on what I was looking at, yeah. mm-hmm. which I kind of liked, you mm-hmm. know. Yes, um, especially yeah, the way when you're talking about Justin Long goes and finds uh, Richard Brake again, like the way she shot before he goes in the door, it's like she comes up to him, but only through certain amounts of shadow. Yeah. And then backs off. Yeah, yeah it's creepy. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So this scene where he finds Richard Brake and he finds all these tapes and then and then Richard Brake offs himself. Um, this is really interesting to me because, first of all, Justin Long doesn't like someone else forcing themselves on him when it's the mama trying to breastfeed him right so you think yes, you think parallels. maybe he's gonna get some understanding here no because that's right. not this movie there's good then, parallels with his character in these then yes. he sees the evidence of richard Brake assaulting and raping these women and he has the balls to be all holier than thou about this and tell him jail they're gonna come and all, every cop in this county funny about it like he does not have any kind of oh, he it, thinks like, he's not on the same level yeah. when he is right, yeah, yeah. he's seeing yeah. like you know yeah yeah He's seeing taped ra- whatever yeah. the videotape of the rape is like mm-hmm. he's like what's wrong with you yeah. <laughs> that you mm-hmm. would do this. Um, she tries to she does eventually find police, mm-hmm. and they're like completely disbelieving her. And I'm sitting there going like, okay, the movie is trying to do this thing where like cops just don't you know like listen. But I'm also sitting there going like they're handcuffed in some ways that like they can't go into the house. You know, like, yeah, but she calls of, like, police protocol. earlier and they say, we don't have anybody to send yeah. and leave her hanging. But that's like, uh, that's like, to me, it was like, man, things are so bad. Even when the cops are there, they're getting called to like, there's shootings going on. We got yeah. A, yeah. a situation and now there's shots being fired so, and we got to deal with this. And I'm like looking at them going like they are looking at her like she's a crack addict. Mm-hmm. Yes. You know, it's like they've seen this so much. That they a real person in peril reads to them as a crack addict, and they've got shootings that they got to go deal with. Yeah, and it was like, man, this is a sorry state. Well, but I, <laughs> I actually really, really, really appreciated this portrayal of cops in this movie because I found this to be pretty realistic. Mm. I actually brought this up to my, I talked to my therapist a lot about this movie, <laughs> um, but this scene in particular because I had a similar experience with cops where they were not helpful and they and they kind of abandoned me in a situation where I needed them. And I was telling her, I was like, I am so grateful 
to see like my experience being like put on the screen and for people to realize this is a thing that actually happens but it also depresses the fuck out of me that like this happened so much and is such a common thing that it made it to a movie and so we spent many 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 hours talking about that but yeah and that's such a small sliver of this movie compared to all the other things that we've talked about that are going on with it but i just love this all these different little um, points of view. It's this movie mm-hmm. showing. Yeah, yeah. Well, you are you yeah. are really getting that small yeah. different points of views on everybody, and nothing is like nothing ends up being what it seems, or like the image of what you're looking at mm-hmm. will throw you off to what is really going on, mm-hmm. which is a theme of the you know all all the characters in the movie. Mm-hmm. They do it very well. Yeah, but she ends up going back to her house. She does. And this is this is like probably the the worst infraction of like stretching believability in what a character would do, right? Yeah. She's literally this, out. This is the area in, in which I got to. I'm just like, yeah. When, when she smashes the window at night and goes back in for her keys and then walks out, you're like, okay, this makes sense. This is what a logical person would do. Yes. And then she backs the car up and drives it into the house. Because well, the, the monster comes out, yeah. so she pins it. Right. So I guess... I guess even that somehow does, you know, because I, I guess I was with you. I'm like, why would you go back? And I, I get that the guy is there. And I suppose, right, you know, there's that, like, I guess there's a fight or flight. Would I help another person? And she doesn't or go know to get he's authority? a fucking asshole. But she also yeah. has no relationship to him or connection to him at all. Yeah, if, but, if it was, if it, if this was Bill Skarsgård's character, yeah, it would make back. a lot more sense. Yeah, but this is just a human thing. It's like, right. you can't leave this. Per- you know what the horror is. Mm-hmm. You've been there. Right. For, you know, she's like, she's going to kill him. But I I can do something about it. But I think what makes it work is that she pins, she crashes into the monster comes out. She crashes into it. So she thinks she's neutralized the problem. Yeah. So she can go actually back into the house. It's like, okay, so it checks out. It's like, maybe I do it. Under that, you but know, I, I, the I do like that the movie calls it out though, because the homeless guy even says, "You can just drive out of here and go and be done with this." Yeah. He tells her, "Like, yeah. just drive and be done with this." And who's to say she wasn't like going to try the poli- like go to a police station again? Right. Well, that probably like, would have been. Here's, next. Here, yeah. I own a car. Yeah, I am yeah, a yeah, person. Yeah, yeah. Trust me. Let's go. Yeah. But yeah, I love the crack way- addicts don't own cars, Sean. Like, I mean, what? Okay, what, <laughs> that, that's a bigger discussion for another time. Um, um, I love the way that the mother bursts out of the front door because you think. Yeah. So when dramatic. When she, well, that's what I love because you uh, think when she's ba- it is when full she's starfish. backing full starfish. When she's backing the car out, because the way it's shot, you think like headlights will hit the woman standing there. Yeah, like we see in every movie. Right, yeah. it'll just be a reveal as the car and the mm-hmm. camera turn into her. But no, it turns and then she's like, like you said, <laughs> ah! yes. right out the front door. She which explodes is, yep. out that front door. She's yeah. like, it's nighttime. Yeah. It's yeah. time to go outside. <laughs> Party time. Yeah, yep. this is where she can be yeah. a real freak. Free reign. Yeah, mm-hmm. but. It turns out that it's not that easy to uh, to rescue no, Justin Lawn because he has Richard Brake's gun that yes. Brake has killed himself with. And so, I mean, I like the way that scene is done because we're from Tess's point of view and there's a light down in the tunnel and she's like, hello, and then bang. Pop. <clears throat> Which, so he shot her knowing who she was and he had the light shining on her. Oh, she yeah, couldn't, too far away. She couldn't too see far him. Away, and I think his adrenaline is probably just from what he's you get of his character. He's not yeah. the most steady dude. Yeah. yeah, that's true. That's true. So he, he he's he like, many there's somebody, I hear somebody and then the sound of a voice startled him and he shot her. And then he's doing that thing, which I think goes to his character. We're like, Oh, I'm sorry if I hurt you, you know, cause yeah. he apologizes to the woman that he uh, assaulted. Right. It's almost like it, earlier. It, it's like, I'm sorry that I hurt you. You were right in the way of the bullet. Yeah. But, yeah so yeah. I'm sorry that I hurt you. That feels like he's like I wouldn't mind. He's always trying to. It's not his fault. Yeah. He, he never takes responsibility like, for anything. Because I think he actually says, and this is it's it's funny, sad, tragic, and like you know, like it really, uh, uh you know, it colors your feelings to this guy. He's like, he shot her. He's he's sorry. He's gonna get her help. He's like. Okay, let's get up. Okay, I'm saving, I'm saving you. you. <laughs> saving you. You know, it's like, okay, it is. It's all about him. You yeah. know, like, yeah. he's Optics, the yeah. savior, uh-huh. savior. Well, to himself, yep, you know, yeah. like, and, well, yeah, you're right. Yeah. Because uh, that's it's all about protecting that his image. Like, yeah. Yep. And so they make it out of the house and then they're like going to go find the homeless guy down by the water tower. Mm, yes. And that's where we get the exposition dump, which I, it's like, do we, you know, like, you know, uh, dude has been living there forever and, yeah. you know, breeding these women. Yeah. Um, do you need that? Because I, I always am like, because it seems like he has knowledge of things that he shouldn't know. Yeah. Uh, but do we need that to explain? 
because I guess there's a lot of you know evidence that suggests that's what's happening. Yeah. All he's really doing in his dialogue is kind of drawing a fine point on it, and saying, "Yep, what you thought was happening, that was what was actually happening." Do you think maybe that was a studio note that I they wonder? were just like? Just, just to make sure everyone's on the same page, or just it's possible you know. that they're just like it's we a, need someone a, to make it a little clearer. Yeah, yeah. If nothing else, like they don't just use the scene for that because it ends up That's being true. a moment for the audience to breathe after yeah. we've just gone through some stuff, and it eventually ends up becoming a scare and a death mm-hmm. scene, yeah. and uh, uh, adds a little more to the mother as she's busting through walls. She's like the the Kool Aid. Yeah, no kidding. How strong is she? Holy right. shit! Well, yeah. she survived being hit by the car. Yeah, yes. you know that was number one. And bust through a water tower wall. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, and he's like, I've been living for fifteen, living here for fifteen years. That bitch ain't got here yet. Yeah, and then, and then bam, <laughs> yes. right on cue, yep. right on she cue. She rips his arm off and beats, beats him, him to with death it. with it. It's yep. Awesome. Which at this point, just like, all right, yes, <laughs> yeah, yep, yeah. let's just keep going with yep. that. Love it. If that's where we're gonna yep. go, that's what we're gonna do. Yep. And so why, I guess Tess and uh, AJ decide like going up the water tower yeah. is oh, the this, best. This is such a movie thing, right? You let's climb on top ground. of this. It, tower it's gotta be like yeah. a it's a it's gotta be a survival thing you go up the tree right the, yeah, the predators yeah. at the base you go up you get or you find a place where there's stairs. only one entrance <laughs> like all right i yeah. they can only come from there yeah if nothing else that makes you feel a little bit safer yeah, but, but this is also like more moments because this is when justin long has his moment i guess so you're talking about the camera oh, i don't know if i'm a good the person, music or a swell, person yeah. but I'm, I'm gonna try and save someone mm-hmm. uh, i'm gonna get out of this we're gonna do it this mm-hmm. this is where you thought he was gonna have the redemption I was very upset but yeah then, but then once she bursts through and kills him like this is uh kills the it, homeless guy yeah yeah kills a homeless guy um it, it becomes a moment where you know that that won't be him because he is uh, he he immediately runs away and leaves Tess yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's trying to go over the fence, like he is ahead of her, trying to get away. Oh yeah, not caring about her no. whatsoever. He finds stairs. She's wounded. Right, you know, he yeah. finds yeah. stairs and he doesn't say, "Oh, look, I found stairs. Come on, let's go up this yeah. way." He's just gone. And yeah. she's like, "Wait for me." And he's yeah. like, well, "Come on," you know. Mm-hmm. Yep. Uh, so yeah, up to the that, top that of the water scene tower. was good. You're right. Uh, the, you know, like because it was his moment of self awareness. Yeah. You know? Yes. And then he immediately goes good, back. On I, yeah. Have I always been a bad guy, or am I a good guy who's done a bad thing? Mm-hmm. You know. Yeah. All that, and like, you think he's freaking, talking about the house stuff, and it's just like, it's, oh, no, 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 no. Yeah, about, he's talking about the yeah. the past. Yeah. But um, and this is his like chance to fix it, right? Well, he thinks if I can fix this, that means I can fix the other thing. Like yeah. he's just. But it is keeping you know, again. I guess that's the whole thing that this movie's doing. It's doing these pendulum swings yeah. of where your you know uh, uh, sympathies lie. You know, it's like it just keeps <laughs> yeah. going back and forth, or what your expectations are. Um, I, th- I would say you even feel bad for the mother at certain points in yeah. this movie because, like, sure. she's not really a villain, she's doing, right? She's I the mean, victim she's of circumstances. Off her instinct as yeah. a mother, which is all she knows after being held and tortured. She's a victim too. Yes. Yeah, like yeah. exactly. How many babies yeah. she's had at this point? Right. She's just yeah. that. Mm-hmm. At that and where point? do they all go? Eat. I think Those they cages. eat them. But, but <laughs> does he yeah. have a burn pit where, somewhere? I'm, I'm curious. Mm-hmm. Like, where are all the other children? Yeah. Well, exactly. Because also the homeless guy says she's not even the worst thing that comes out of there. And when he yeah. said that, I'm like, that means Richard Brake is alive. But it, you could sequel. But it leaves the sequel right. door open. Yeah. yeah for who something knows? Else. Uh, How far been? do those tunnels go? Yeah. Well, think about it. A scene in the dark tunnel. It's quiet, and then all you hear is a bunch of tiny little feet <laughs> and running, and then you hear the cries, and then it's just a baby army coming to get I you, know. baby oh mongoloid God. army. I know. I wonder if there was a scene they cut out where you just heard like babies crying in the and, dark. But didn't yeah. explore like it or something didn't. like that? Yeah. Oh, yeah. That would have been and good. the studio was like, okay, let's, uh, let's get a little too crazy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we don't want to go too far. Um, but to the top of the water tower. To the top of the water f- tower. For a crazy and it's like ending. there's nowhere to get to go. They're trapped. She's gonna come up, and Justin Long's like, "I can live. I can get away." But you have to slow her down. And he fucking throws her off. The he grabs her by the hair. Says, "Come get your baby," and yeah. tosses her off the side. Yep. Yeah. But it becomes more amazing because the mother jumps after her. And it's hilarious. <laughs> it's it's a, it's a, both it's theaters a, laughed out loud when I saw yes, it when because this it's happened. a shocking thing to see that body come over the top, and it's very funny, like diving through the yes. air. Yeah, it's very good. But then it also turns into a whole thing. Like you can't 
you can't work at physics or science at this moment right, at all right. because mm-hmm. the mother ends up underneath Tess. Yeah, she grabbed Save her, turned her around. We don't see it, but yeah. she yeah. landed. It doesn't really work if you think about it. Well, but, yeah, but can. And, movie magic. Yeah, yeah. yeah. lost a lot of blood from a massive head wound. Yeah. Yes. When he looks down, there's a bunch of blood. And it's, it's like, a little oh, bit of a watcher problem where it's like, you lost a lot of blood. Yeah. 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 But again, we've we've just come from a part where she broke through a wall, tore a man's arm off and beat him to death. Yeah. No, I was more saying with Tess, like, yes. Tess should be much more fucked up than yeah, she oh is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. I, mean, yeah. I guess I mean, there's, there's the implication of that, like in in a moment, because I guess um, while he goes down there, you know, to the you know, which I was like, okay, why is he even going down close to this? Yeah. But then he sees Tess is still alive, and he's like, oh, good, you know, you yes. can explain what happened, and like I wasn't thinking I had to do this. So and, he's and, trying to be the hero. He again. is, but then he, but the, it's the language that he's using that tips you off that he is still the same person. Oh like, yeah, he's but, making but then, it happen I mean, in you, his head. And you, like, and you started to slip, and there's you, I couldn't save yep, you, and it's yep, just yep, like, yep. oh, just but, yeah. just making it right in his head. Already spinning it right in his head. But it turns out mom's still alive. And she fucking is she the good pokes guy his point? goddamn eyes out Again. and rips his head apart. Yeah, it was Jeepers Creepers. Yeah. That's what yeah. I was thinking. Yes. I'm like, did they do that? Because yes. <laughs> I gotta <laughs> wonder, yeah. His eyeballs <laughs> so gooey. squirt out of yeah. his head. Yeah. And then she pulls his head uh, in half by the scalp. It's yeah. awesome. And then she turns around to Tess because all she wants to do is, uh, like, you know, let's go home. She boops her on the nose. She yep. does. Yeah. Boop. Boop. Yep. <laughs> Which I guess is playing to that like sympathy for yeah. the you know the character of this this thing because she just <laughs> wants her to go home yeah, like go back, yeah back. It's, yeah it's kind of sad it's her lack of understanding mm-hmm. of the world I guess that yes. makes her sympathetic it's basically she's an animal at this point mm-hmm. and Tess you know she tries to pick Tess up I think that's where mm-hmm. I was yes. like okay so there may be something more wrong with Tess than. You know, uh, yeah, this is very yeah. hurt. She, she's all busted. But she up. gets up and starts walking after. Oh, that's right. That. She yeah. does. She does. Yeah. She does yeah. indeed. But the whole idea, she because uh, Justin Long has Richard Brake's gun still, yes. and so he fumbled it. That was also a great scene. <laughs> oh my god! I mean, just yeah. how he did it. Dude. Great acting. The POV <laughs> shots of him like holding the the knife and the yeah. flashlight down I the like hall those. were really cool. Yeah, were cool. Yeah, it's very action movie mm-hmm. uh, framing of you know. Yeah, very felt like I was person. playing uh, um, Golden Eye. Yeah, the whole I felt game. like I was playing Golden Eye. You know, throwing <laughs> knives or something. Right. Like that. Yeah. yeah, he'll have a, a lighter and a, and a fucking spray can <laughs> yeah. at some point. Yeah. See, that would have been cool. Where was that moment in this movie? That sequel. Been fucking cool. Yeah, sequel. sequel. Yeah. Barbarian two. Let's hope. God you damn just it, find there the, isn't the, one, but yeah, um, right. The mother just likes one. to do her hair. She's like, oh. is this hairspray? Yeah. And then gets used later. But I like that that uh, Tess is able to actually like Tess even feels some kind of mm-hmm. sympathy for the mother. Yes. Um, but presses that gun right up against her cheek, and the mother doesn't know what it is. No, mm-hmm. she gives her a little. Which you is know, also it's like sad. She's not, yeah, oh, yeah. She's not afraid of the gun. Right. And then there's just a bang, and you go to credit. Like, and then Be My like, Baby plays over the credits, which is yeah. a fucking great use yep. of that song. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was wondering, especially because like, it's a Motown song. It's uh, perfect. Yeah, <laughs> oh, and then, right. yeah. And even that goes into like Mr. Sandman playing after Halloween too. Like yeah. just those, just playing the music that goes against what you've just experienced yeah. Yeah. and all that. It, mm-hmm. oh, it. Why does it always work? I mean, most mm-hmm. of the time it works. It's yeah. usually pretty good. But yeah, I love that. Pulls the trigger, credits. We get a few extra frames of her getting up and walking away, but other yeah. than that, we're done. Yeah, yeah, I don't even know if we needed that, but I suppose mm-hmm. it was to show that she wasn't, you know, yeah. right. critically injured in that fall. Yes. Mm-hmm. But even again, if they had just ended it there, it would have been like, bravo. Yeah. How it needed to be. Yeah. Well, Okay, we told you at the beginning of the show that you should watch the movie before you listen to this, but I guess we're going to go around the table and tell you <laughs> whether or not you should watch the movie. Well, we'll give you our individual thoughts on it. Um, but before we do that, we're going to read some of your mail. Oh, yeah. And in order to do that, we're going to have to summon our mailman. His name's Igor. Bring us the mail. Masters! Masters, the mail! I've got the mail. So many letters. Our followers are rising. Rising. Why, thank you, Igor. Thanks, Igor. What do you think his relation to mother is? Oh. Do you think his mother They're is anything cousins like... cousins or something, right? right? Yeah, there's got to be something. The there's, a, there's a resemblance, yeah. Yeah. if nothing else. Oh, and the lady did look like Richard Brake. I know she like, did. I guess she did. I, if yeah. they had done that on purpose, I wouldn't be surprised. Like, if the makeup, because, I mean, they are related at some point. Yeah. So I thought if, it was they, Richard I did Brake too. playing it. I was waiting point. at the credits to see if, like, did he yeah. play them both? But, but according to the credits, it wasn't him. Yeah. It was, right? some, it was some guy I had like never Matthew heard of. Patrick David or something yeah. like yeah, that. Yeah, he would have But not Javier Botet. Botet. No, not Botet. That would have been awesome. I wish it was him. 
Well, uh, I guess we should let people know how they can participate on this interactive portion of our show. You can reach out and follow along on Facebook. Facebook.com slash Saturday Night Freak Show. Or Twitter. At Sat Freak Show. You can email us directly. At Saturday Night Freak Show, Yahoo.com. Or you can follow along on Instagram at Saturday Night Freak Show. Uh, MF Mad, the keeper of the Saturday Night Freak Show. Uh, Wall of Fame. Justin Long? No. Damn. Wait, is he already on the... If he, he should sh- be. He right? should, should be. Because we did. Well, we, we did, did drag uh, me to hell. Yeah, drag me to hell in this one. And Scott, Scott Pilgrim. Did we do Scott Pilgrim. No way. You guys would not do Scott. I, I can't wouldn't be here. Scott I would we did, we did not do like years, Scott years, years yeah, ago. Yeah, none of the didn't. Jeepers Creepers movies of, or whatever one he was no, in. No, he didn't either one of those. Mm. Um, Bill Skarsgård. Oh, was on the Saturday Night Freak Show. Wall of Fame. Yeah. Say that again. It, the, it part two in this. That's yeah. right. All those episodes we did. So welcome aboard, sir. <laughs> welcome you aboard. you poo poo it, but you brought those movies, did you not? Did <laughs> you take fir- us on I field trips? The first yeah. One. Okay. The f- there was a, f- a field trip for the second one. Yeah. Which I was against, but whatever. There you go. <laughs> uh, about tonight's movie, Barbarian. Kryptonian Orphan says it's such a fun horror movie. It reminded me a lot of Malignant. Yeah, it right was down to the font. I think it was the Malignant of 2022. Right. Okay. As in a fun, what are we saying? Fun, fun with a ridiculous turn. And a yes. bunch of, yeah, uh, surprises. Yeah. Yes. yeah. But kind of like out of this world, like over the top surprises, you know. Jimbo Ice says, I think there's a lot to like here, but I feel the movie overall is less than the sum of its parts. A lot of the movie feels like it knows it's got some good stuff to it, but some stuff feels underbaked, like the cops or the homeless guy or the basement and all of its horrors. That's a lot. You were individual. individual. Yeah. I was saying you were individual there for a minute, yeah. and I was with you. But then you're like, and then the basement and everything. I'm like, oh, okay. But I, 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 we do agree there is a little bit of a breakdown with the cops and stuff. But whatever. I, I do wonder though, like because I saw this movie knowing nothing about it other than Bill Skarsgård and Georgina Campbell in an Airbnb, and I saw it opening week and like didn't have anything spoiled for me. I wonder if like the hype this movie has gotten has put people's expectations in a different spot yeah. than they were yeah. when I saw yeah. it. This episode that we're doing, we're kind of aware yeah, we're going to do that too. Building your expectations <laughs> too high. Yeah, well, this uh, is why we said watch it before. Yeah, we went this. in cold, right? Yeah. And yeah, so it's very um, cold. you. Yeah. Trevor Morelli says, if you guys haven't commented on this already, what are your thoughts on the comedy sketch group, The Whitest Kids? You know, because Barbarians director. Zach Kreger is one of the founding members, which explains bits of subtle comedy found throughout this horror flick. It's super underrated, in my opinion. I'm not familiar with Wise Kids. You know, you know I know what? it's a thing I'd never watched. I'm not either. Yeah. Surprisingly, I feel like I should be, but we are not the whitest kids. You know, apparently, because a TV show or a YouTube thing. I, like, I don't know. Is it a streaming deal or you know? I don't. I. I have. I can't. You know. I'm not. Gonna I think speak this was from like know. the early 2000s. This is not okay. a current thing. I don't think. No, it was a past thing because I've heard yeah. the name a lot, mm-hmm. but I have never uh, dug into it to figure it out. I might after this. All right. Well, uh, Apple Eva says... Uh, TV series from 2007 to 2011. Okay. Okay. So we need um, to correct it a bunch. So about Barbarian, <laughs> Apple Eva says it's an effective thriller that had so much more underlying social commentary than I expected mm-hmm. after further reading yep. and watching analysis about it. Yep. Yeah. Agreed. It's one of the, it's, it makes, it's one of the better parts of the movie. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, it informs so much of the movie. Um... Yeah, because even like economic, uh, yeah, know, yeah. I mean, well, it also goes to the, the whole thing with the cops and everything. Yep. Um, Novato Judoka says, um, "Well, he's saying good job, everyone, to all the voters who uh, picked this one. It was a team <laughs> yes. effort. Yeah. Good job, voters. Uh, back on the backs all around. Question for the hosts: Are we in agreement that Megan is a freak show field trip worthy movie? Right? I mean, Ooh. I want to." But as of recording this, I haven't seen it yet, and Colin has. So I, I feel like I'm not either. in a position to. I would love to. I but we'll see. Yeah, Maybe I would say it is not uh, not this year's malignant. So oh, there, that's yeah. a bummer. Unfortunately, that was, it wasn't as wacky and crazy. I, I think the expectation was set there because of Keela Cooper. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wrote both or mm-hmm. co-wrote malignant mm-hmm. and wrote uh, this one. Right, right. Yeah. I forgot about that. Yeah. Uh, uh, Sobe Detura says, I just want to hear the host's worst B&B stories if they have them. Well, I'll tell you right now, I don't have any. So Michaela, knock us out. Uh, so I recently bought a house and one of the house I went to look at, um, was kind of okay, but it started to have a little weird things. You're like, okay, well that should be fixed. And they kind of hid that in the pictures and you're starting to just be like, okay, pictures kind of lie. They covered things up and we went in the basement and there was some mold in the basement and I was already like, okay, well, we're not going to buy this house, but we're going to look around while we're here. 
And my realtor's telling me about like, yeah, don't buy this house. It's terrible, whatever. And there was a wall that was like a drywall wall that was new. And it had the studs exposed on one side and the drywall only hung on the other. And I pushed on that wall and the door opened up to uh, another room and I about shat my pants. (laughs) And this was like six weeks ago that this happened. And um, my realtor, he's, he's has a sense of humor. Like, us. no, no, the sex room. Well, he he joked. He was like, no, that's where they bear. They kept the bodies. And I was like, that would be funny if it didn't actually look like that. But it was a, they, it was a newly built false wall in this basement that opened to another moldy room. So Uh. I, I was probably just a grow operation or something. That's what I'm telling myself. But (laughs) I, oh, but I, but Toby, there my a, husband, there was and I, a gin joint down there. And this my, is the fake wall. My husband and I were immediately like, we need to leave this house now. Bad, vi- bad vibes <laughs> opened up bad out of that vibes. room immediately. So that, like, that's I haven't stayed at a bear at Airbnb. I've had good experiences there, but house hunting, woof, you'll see some spooky shit. Yeah, house hunting, yeah. McKinley has shared some stories with us. Oh god, um, I don't yeah. think I've had a bad experience quite yet. Everything's been good. I busted my face open uh, at a recent one, but that was. Not the fault of the Airbnb. <laughs> yeah. So, no, I'm pretty good. I yeah. still haven't done it. I'm sketchy on the whole thing. It's, it's not a hotel. So well, I'll get over that eventually, <laughs> I'm sure. It's. But. I mean, there's benefits to it and downsides to it, just like, you know, anything. But uh, we were talking about, um, while we were watching the movie, is like, when she was locked in the basement, Colin said, well, why doesn't she just kick the door down? And I immediately said, well, because she'd get like a $500 damage fee oh. from the Airbnb host. Right. Do they look for any reason to charge you? Right. Mm-hmm. And we don't know the direness of the situation at that point. Yeah. Because right? yeah. Yeah. if you knew, you'd be like, I'm going to break this door. <laughs> right. right. <laughs> I'm going to get out of but here. But at that point, she's just annoyingly locked in the basement. So. Right. And she mm-hmm. thinks that Skarsgård's coming back. Yeah. So yeah. she may get mm-hmm. out. Yeah. That's why I was like, if I didn't, I'd <laughs> yeah. kick that fucking door down. Yeah. I, I mean, eventually later, she's just breaking doors and windows and shit. So she gets mm-hmm. over it. Uh, last week we watched a movie called The Fly, uh-huh. and Travis Legler says David Cronenberg was the only fun part of Jason X. Oh yeah, that's right. Yeah. He, he gets yes. a spear. He gets that a spear through his midsection in that mm-hmm. one. Yeah, because he knew the director was at uh, Jason Isaac. No, it was it something mm-hmm. not Isaac? Uh, not Jason Isaac. No, nope. Don't somebody know. Isaac. I'm sorry, I forgot your name, sir. But yeah, and Are he was you? in uh, Resurrection with Christopher Lambert. He was. So David Cronenberg pops up every once in a while yep. as an actor. Michael mm-hmm. Whitaker says, uh, Curse of the Fly. Mm-hmm. The James third, Isaac. James Isaac, thank you very much. Director of Jason X. Yes. Uh, but uh, Michael Whitaker's saying that Curse of the Fly, because we were talking about the sequels, that was the third sequel mm-hmm. to the original yep. 1958 movie, uh, made the problem a genetic one. So they were aware of the concept uh, of genetics back then, but as true. far as specialty magazines go, I think my sister has you beat. She worked in the art department for an ocular surgery news magazine. Dang. That's <laughs> drawn surgery. like eye diagrams and I was shit. Just saying, that might actually have some good pictures in it. Yeah. yeah. Just of surgeries and yeah. shit. Yeah. We were talking, what about the, the, the fake particle magazine? Particle magazine, yeah, particle Omni magazine. magazine. I think uh, uh, Legler, Popular Science. Legler mm. posted a picture <laughs> of uh, there was Omni was featured in Ghostbusters, had the proton pack yep. on it, which yep. was like, oh yeah, I remember that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Pat Hetfield says, in my opinion, you're forgetting about another good horror remake, although I really can't blame you since it's probably not very well known. Toby Hooper did a remake of the Cameron Mitchell starring Toolbox Murders. I have not seen There was seen a that. remake. Yeah. I did see that. Um. Yeah, it's a better movie than the first. The, the original Toolbox Murders is not good. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um. It's more infamous than anything. Gotcha. Yeah. Um. Just and the new world. one like threw the plot out and kept the name. Mm. Yeah, I remember. Yeah, I remember and it wasn't bad. That. You know, and I think it's one of the few movies that Sherry Moon Zombie, she was in it, and it's not a Rob Zombie movie. Really? Uh, yeah, she's not in for is long. Is she naked? In Somebody it? else thought she had no. talent. No, wow. Was... Okay. Wow. She's really breaking out of character here. No, the star of that was uh, Angela Bettis. I think it was. was she oh yeah. Really? May. Yeah. Huh. Interesting. It's not bad. It's not great, but I mean, it's an gotcha. okay Toby Hooper movie. Uh, the boy with the Jason tattoo says, <laughs> "Hey, freak show, talking about remakes." And all, what are your top five horror movies that need a remake? And here's my list. I was going to share my top ten, but I had to do some moving around. Don't Look in the Basement, Deadly Friend, Butcher Baker, Nightmare Maker, Happy Birthday to Me, and I Drink Your Blood. Do we have any movies that Monster need to be? <laughs> just Why to, not? Just to go well, back into the archives. We were saying, I guess, that uh, they should bad stop movies. remaking movies. Yeah. Night of the Lepus, like I said last remake week. bad movies. Remake yeah, Kingdom of Spiders, like I said last week. Yeah, give me a... Yeah, yeah. get any of those, yeah. like... Wow, just Bring all, back I don't trust anyone to, re- to remake those movies. If we did... Uh, yeah. 
uh, Kingdom of the Spiders would have a bunch of CG see, fucking spiders. Yeah, that's true. I'm like, see, I guess my position on that, that yeah. is like, I like Night of the Lepus. Yeah, yeah. it's kind of goofy, but yeah. it is its thing. And Kingdom of the Spiders is kind of goofy, yeah. but it's its thing. It's you got to look for. And I don't have an immediate example, but I know I've thought this when you watch a movie where you're like, this is going a good direction. And then it right. takes a dive and you're like, fuck, if they would have gone this way. Yeah. Those are the ones that you should probably. Right. Read. And then you start uh, casting them with the recent actors. Like, yeah. We could redo this. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. I feel like there's some obvious ones I'm not thinking. of. Yeah. I'm, we're never well, good. Come I back know, to this. Off the cuff, like, I can't yeah. remember. And, but I know I've had that. Oh, sensation. yeah. We usually yeah. get them in the middle of a movie. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. Ah, we just I never write general, them down. You know, I was thinking about that, though. It's like there's so many remakes of, you know. And the only point of a remake seems to be um, this Money. current audience doesn't know it. And so we're going to just update it so they can go see it. And it's like just to make money. That's the only reason that a remake really exists. It's not like a cover version of a song, mm -hmm. you know, which at least I can get, you know, or like a new production of a, a stage play. It's like, no, the fucking thing was filmed. You can go watch it whenever you want. Yeah. We should just leave the originals. Alone. Unless you happen to, you know make a good one which right. they have done mm -hmm. but that would be you have to come up with that uh like i can do it better yeah. here's a better version of it but if you can do they that can try firestarter more... a third time no <laughs> why not <laughs> we haven't done it with twice we've tried we haven't done it no we no. can't who's it i don't think because the... it's only gonna be an x-men movie i don't yeah we I don't are that the... far where i don't think we can go back well you have to but I this, mean, see, that's the thing those... this one wasn't an x-men movie at all and i kind of wished it would have yeah because it would have been at least a more interesting movie than what it was there might be i don't know it, it, adaptations of a book that you're like no. i read the book and yeah. i saw it completely different than the the movie version i think we i could do it better yeah. you know i mean i guess I don't know. My, my um, thoughts on it there you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. What, you you would want the orgy back in, right? No, you want the child orgy I mean, back in? The, the no, I would. I would no, go. We don't need it. No, it'd be the structure would be the thing that like I would keep from the book. It's like that book yeah. has to be told that in that order. Yes. And that's where they fucked the second movie up. Uh, Joey Blythe said, uh, "I forgot that Todd McFarlane did the fly as an action figure. We yeah. pointed mm -hmm. that out last yeah. week." And uh, Morris. Says on your fly episode, I heard you groan over Sally in the 2022 Texas Chainsaw. Yep. I know a lot of people hate that movie, but I'm a big fan. One of my favorite horror movies of 2022. And I think the point of Sally in that movie was to parody Halloween 2018 and show how pointless Lori is to the movie. It is in that movie to Michael Myers. I personally think it's one of the more fun, clever horror movies of 2022, along with Barbarian. Let me know your thoughts. I mean, I had a great time watching that movie. When I watched it, I just didn't like the Sally Hardesty storyline at all. I feel like it. I mean, they literally if they threw were in the commenting trash. on it. Then they did not do a good enough job to get it that didn't across. come through. Yeah. Did not come through. No, I didn't get it as a parody. I thought no. it was um, just hey, we're gonna have the survivor of mm -hmm. the yeah. previous movie. Here's what she's at. I mean, yeah, it was kind of like the Laurie Strode thing. Mm -hmm. Like I've been yeah. waiting for this moment for, mm -hmm. but I didn't. Uh, you know. Mm -hmm. I didn't have anything against it based on the movie that it ended up being. I, I was entertained by that one. I, I, I had Texas fun with it. It was stupid, uh, yeah. but it was fun. Yeah. I dug it. I I, yeah, I just, did, too. I'll I had just, a good time with it. Was it was produced by Fede Alvarez, but mm -hmm. not directed by it. Okay. So now we're going to go around the table. We're <laughs> going to tell you what we thought of tonight's movie, Barbarian, starting with... Colin. Oh, God. What did you think about 2022's Barbarian? I loved it. Ah, oh, there it is. Uh, I loved it when I first saw it, and um, tonight was, I mean, it was less, it, like, I, I haven't gone back to this one, I think, deliberately, because I wanted to kind of keep that um, initial... You had such a good time watching the first one. Yeah. You want to keep that. You almost don't want to Yeah, because then you're, like, kind of, you know, uh, then you start to take it apart more, yes. as far as, like, how they actually put it together. Mm -hmm. um, but it's fun to do that for this one? Yeah, because I think... Um, I don't know. I mean, it feels like I've said everything that I wanted to say about this movie. The It kept me engaged from get-go to the end, and that seems to happen very infrequently nowadays. Unfortunately, when I watch movies, especially horror movies, I'm going to say Megan, right? I was ahead of it. It doesn't do anything that's uh, new or exciting. It's like, oh, I've seen this before in some other version, blah, blah, blah. But Barbarian didn't do that. Barbarian, I was constantly you know, questioning my own judgment of the characters. I was questioning my own judgment of where the plot was going. It uh, kept revealing stuff uh, as far as uh, story and plot and, you know, like incident all the way through it. Um, 
I, again, I don't think these things are easy to do. I think it takes a lot of hard mental gymnastics as a screenwriter to pull off. I think uh, it was a well-directed movie. A lot of the shots, I think we were commenting as we watched them tonight, it's like, oh, that's a good shot. Mm -hmm. You know, this is a good, you know, the shot that uh, they mount the camera to Richard Brake's car's yeah. uh, passenger window. Oh, that and, was very good. Love that You know, line. the tracking shot where he's tracking the, the his next victim. Right. Yeah. And, and then it snap cut. cuts, yep. but we're still there. Yep. You know, that's good. like, that's good stuff. The very first shot, you know, there's some... Uh, camera moving. I'm like, this is a good movie. When I, she steps through the threshold for the first time and the camera follows yeah, her through, like, the and through the wall yeah. and then fades to black. Oh, and then so we get good. the title at that point. Yeah. It's like, oh, what did she just step into? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. Such it's well constructed it, movie. It's, mm -hmm. And and I guess that uh, like the the camera movements. We're saying that they're good, but they're like psycholo psychologically motivated. Mm -hmm. You know. Because it does kind of, he's in your head, I guess. And that's the, the, the mark of like a really good storyteller, I think. So I'm kind of curious. E even those scenes where he does the quick zoom in on her phone when she realizes she forgot it and her key when she realizes yeah. it, it, it's kind of mimicking that feeling of like that jolt you get when you can't feel your keys in your right. pocket, you know? Oh, that's very, that is a mm -hmm. good equivalent. Yeah. You're right. Which mm -hmm. is like, <gasps> and yeah. Then, yeah. That's good. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then that's the only thing you can think about. And then you're just like underwater thinking, oh, fuck, where did I leave my keys? Yep. Yeah. Mm hmm. But I guess, you know, on top of everything I'm saying, it's also very tense and it was scary. Mm -hmm. uh, and so I think, yeah, best horror movie of 2022, hands down. Things coming out of the dark still works. Mm -hmm. Thank God. Yeah. So that's Barbarian. Mm -hmm. uh, Mikhail, what'd you think? Yeah, I agree, Colin. I think I think it's a perfect movie. I think that I went into it knowing the perfect amount of information was Bill Skarsgård and Georgina Campbell are in an Airbnb. And like, I, I remember Colin, you first telling me about when you first saw the trailer and I was like, I don't need to see that because I've seen the rental and the rental was a terrible <laughs> spooky Airbnb movie directed by Dave Franco. Don't ever watch that movie. <laughs> um, but this, like, I do like that you're kind of catfished a little bit with the Airbnb setup, and it becomes, this is so much bigger of a movie than you could have thought, but it's also got a really small scope of a, which is really interesting too. And I find it interesting how many comedy people we have bleeding over into the horror mm -hmm. genre. Timing. But, but it's it, all about time. But yep. it makes sense because comedy and horror are both about getting an involuntary reaction out of you by subverting your expectations. Mm -hmm. So it really makes sense. It's just it's just a different flavor of the same thing, you know? Um, and but I love to see it. I want to see more of this crossover. Let's not give Jordan Peele all the credit of being the comedy crossover guy, you know? I mean, he's great. I love him his stuff, but there's other let's give some space to other people as well I think um this will, movie will do that yeah and i mean i love that this went to theaters and it did well and like i said from my experience um the first time i went it was about half full and that was opening week and then i went the third week so two weeks later and my theater was almost completely full i had people on both sides of me and i was like oh my god the movies are back guys like because this is a <laughs> word of mouth thing yeah because this is the third week you know and so i loved seeing that felt like the old times seeing a horror movie and yeah the fact that people reacted so much just little things like that the tape measure people were cracking up but also they were horrified at the macbook being thrown like <laughs> there was just so many types of reactions to have in this movie and it's it's just expertly crafted. I love the use of Bill Skarsgård. And I mean that they're very smart with that, not just because he's he's known for playing a monster, but because he is attractive, but also weird looking. Yeah. Um, so that so you could like if this was like he's Danny DeVito, Goldblum. this is not the same movie, right? Yeah. Maybe he is a new Jeff maybe Goldblum. Maybe he's those is. eyes, man. Yeah. He does have the same kind of wide set eyes. Yeah. He needs to work on his hand gestures yes, more. Yeah, but yeah, he needs to be more <laughs> Yeah, but I, I reaching but pulling back at the same time. Like uh, uh, I love the balancing act this movie pulled off, and I can't, I can't wait to see more things like this. It gave me like it gave me hope for horror movies again, and I was like, and twenty twenty two. I don't know if we mentioned this at our end of the year episode, but it was an incredibly stacked year for horror movies. Mm -hmm. it, I think yeah. it'll go down as one of the most dense movies since the eighties, probably. Um, and Except most of them like are good. Original. Uh, not even original. Look at all the franchise stuff we had last year, too. We had yeah. Scream, Halloween, Texas yeah, Chainsaw yeah, yeah, Massacre, yeah. you know, and then we had um, Barbarian. Uh, I mean, there was I mean, there were so many Pearl movies. Yeah. yeah. Pearl and X and Bodies, Bodies, Bodies. Unfortunately, there was nope. We, we didn't even talk. Yeah, there were right. so many horror movies last year. There was um, four weeks from September to October where there was a new horror movie every week mm -hmm. in theaters. That's what a time to be alive, guys. Uh, so, yeah. We still miss Terrifier, too. Mm. <laughs> Darn. Yeah. No, um, no offense to you, Terrifier 2 people. But yeah, this movie spoke to me in multiple levels and I loved it. Um, 
I can't recommend it enough. Sean, what do you think? Yeah, it is. It is nice. Uh, I don't want. I don't want to say it gives me hope for horror movies because I like. I don't think I've lost hope in them. But it is nice to see, and in, in a time like you said, in a time where we are getting all these horror movies, a lot of legacy stuff and ever. But just like an original horror movie, it takes elements that are kind of familiar. But again, like we discussed throughout this last hour and a half, that the filmmaker, um, uh, everyone knows what they're doing in this movie. They, they, like you said, Colin, they know where your head is at, and they screw with it throughout this entire movie. Um. I was engaged the entire time, which thank you. Awesome. If you can get me like every, it's so it's well true. structured. Like it gets you. If you start, if, if they never lost me, but if they would start to lose you cut to something new, that would just be like, Oh, what the fuck's happening now? So I've never been it, more engaged in the movie like yeah. this in years. Like, probably. Where are we going? Yeah. And it's just like, I love that journey to get us there. Where are we going? Oh, we're going to connect here. Then we're going to go to something else and we're going to connect here. And then it just, it gets some wild people. that lady diving off that water tower is just <laughs> the best shot of 2022 no, but very entertaining again the character work i think is great from everybody in this movie um what a just a fun engaging really good movie good horror movie um yeah it it's uh it, very, it's uplifting to see horror like this because mm-hmm. um, it's fun. Right? It, yeah, it does yeah. have a fun. It was a fun it's not journey. like you know, yeah, the world you, is not ending in this yeah. movie. Thing. It is, like you said, the, yeah. the scope of it. It's 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 a big thing in a small world, which yeah. is the, the, like this whole movie could happen and no one would else would know it other than these people involved. Right. You know, which is again that it's, makes it more it's, horrifying, doesn't right? It? And it's huge in their world, yeah. which is all it needs to be. If it's huge for the characters, it doesn't need to be world ending. Exactly, as long as it's big for tell the Mar- characters. Tell Marvel that, please. Tell, well, I mean, yeah, they <laughs> pair it back a little bit, but yeah, what a what a what a fun what a ride it was. Uh, yeah, I recommend it to you all. Um, see it; it's great. Mm-hmm. So, I uh, thank you for picking it. Obviously, yes, thank you for the gift. Uh, when it came out in theaters, I really wanted to do an episode on it, but I, at the same time, I was like. I don't want people to listen to our episode and not see the movie. Yeah. So, so we've gotten to it at a good time. Yeah, it it's been enough time now. Yeah. yeah. Yes. And uh, for those uh, waiting for a physical media release yeah. for it to come to Redbox, I don't think it ever is. That's wild. I think, yeah, I think at they're this recording point, the commentary for it right now, and we'll get that Blu-ray sometime It'll come this out year. from, like, Scream Factory or something, maybe? Yeah, I don't know. Like, Because uh, doesn't Scream Factory have a license with Fox still? Me, stuff. I don't know because it seems like you know this is part of this new. Oh, people on Blu-ray.com are upset about this. Yeah, oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. This will uh, is yeah because what what was the other one? Um, the Town of the Dread at Sundown, the new one, didn't that take forever to come out on Blu-ray or something like that? Yeah, but it eventually right did. This right, one has least. to come on. I don't know because um, on. we were talking about it. You know, like Fox seems to have its pipeline to Hulu, and it feels yeah. like this would have been. You know, I think they make movies and they green light stuff. They pay for it and then they then they try to figure out where they're going to put it yeah and you know so i think it's test audiences they figure if they have like because they got to spend all the money on it you know um to market it but yeah. this one they actually said we're going to do it put it in theaters and i think when it's in theaters then that creates an expectation for the home media yes, market that well so. then you're going to get a, a physical release but i don't know we'll get one uh, at some point gonna happen but it, it'll uh, happen we're telling you you should watch Barbarian. Indeed. That, yeah. Um, so next right. week, as well, we continue, week, yeah, listeners So pick. you guys uh, chose uh, for these four movies, and so we got two left. And so next week, the one that you voted for was The Return of the Living Dead. Dun, dun, dun. All right. I Which, haven't watched this in a while. Okay. I'm excited seen to watch it. One it. time at the uh, drive-in, and I was very drunk, so oh, wow. it's like I've never seen it. Beautiful. So yeah, okay. Well, that's yeah. perfect way I to go into it. And pieces we did of it, but... an episode on Return of the Living Dead three. I think we if you did want to go yes. listen to that because we probably talk about the original a little mm-hmm. bit. Yeah. But this is a seminal classic in the horror genre, is it? We're gonna find out. You stick with us next week on the Saturday Night Freak Show. We hope you'll join us. And until then, boils and ghouls, the basement is going dark. <laughs>